Have you watched on Netflix the documentary Unknown Cave of Bones? So I saw this back in July when it first came out and I found it really interesting um, but I did have some thoughts at the time which I was going to make a video about eventually uh, but I just recently found in a uh, a copy of New Scientist magazine uh, from December that uh, there was a lot of controversy surrounding this documentary and the research depicted in it which was really interesting to read about so I thought I would update you on this. So this is the uh, the magazine which is looking rather battered at the moment. This is the magazine that I read, uh, read about the controversy in. Um, so it's on page 11 Here's the article there. So this documentary was about an extinct species of human or hominin, I think is the official word, uh, called Homo naledi. Um, so Homo naledi is a species of human or species of hominin. Uh, they lived about 250,000 years ago, so super duper ancient. And basically what a hominin is, uh, from what I understand anyway, it's any sort of species of human. So um, it comprises Homo sapiens, which is us, that's our species. Uh, Neanderthals is one that I think a lot of people think about. Uh, there are other species as well, like Homo erectus and Homo habilis. They're all species of hominin or species of human. And Homo naledi is one of them as well. So Homo naledi was thought to have quite a bit of a smaller brain than us and Neanderthals. Um, so us and Neanderthals have quite large brains compared to Homo naledi, so we're thought to be quite a bit more advanced. Um, as opposed to Homo naledi. So this documentary was following a team of researchers led by someone called Lee Berger, or Lee Berger, I'm not too sure how you pronounce it. Um, so they, um, this team of researchers found some bones in a cave system in South Africa called the Rising Star Caves. And they thought that these bones um, belong to the species Homo naledi. So the work that this team of researchers were doing was basically analysing the bones that they were finding in these caves and any other evidence in these caves which could suggest what sort of activities Homo naledi might have partaken all of those years ago. And they claim to have found evidence of Homo naledi doing various different activities uh, which some scientists disagree that there is enough evidence to suggest that they did these. So for instance, so I've just written them down here. So they made claims that Homo naledi uh, used controlled fire to light up the caves. They also claimed that they uh, that this species placed a child's skull on an inaccessible on an inaccessible ledge, so maybe as part of a funerary rite. Uh, they claimed that they have buried corpses. In sediments and that also they have created various engravings on the cave walls um, so for instance as art. It says that there has been a lot of criticism from other scientists in the field so there are many very very skeptical paleoanthropologists, um, researchers that claim that the evidence that they have that they claim to have found is absolutely non-existent there is no evidence or no strong evidence that homina ledi would have buried their dead or that they would have created art uh, in the form of engravings on the walls so the controversy was partly because of how the work was published so what usually happens is that any research studies get submitted for peer review by other scientists and this process is usually confidential um, but however, these researchers did something different. So they published it to a different journal called eLive, which doesn't use that confidential peer review format. They, their peer review process is public. It's completely transparent. So in a way, this is a good thing because peer reviews can be prone to manipulation. Um, whereas if it's completely a transparent process, then there's no, well, substantially less room for manipulation. So basically the peer reviews published were incredibly negative um, and they requested more evidence and also that the that Lee Berger's team use a wider multidisciplinary team of researchers to thoroughly analyse the caves instead. So Lee Berger's team have said that this is just a normal part of the peer review process, that this often happens and it's just that this is in the public eye rather than private in terms of you know being told that you're 
uh, your paper isn't uh, quite substantial enough yet and that more evidence needs to be accumulated. So they say that this is just a normal part of the process um, and that's what they're doing at the moment. They're trying to collect more evidence. Um, but a really big controversy in this whole thing was the fact that the researchers actually allowed a documentary to be made about uh, their research before it was even peer reviewed. So I think this really speaks to the difficulties in terms of communicating science to the general public and I guess how transparent uh, things should be, particularly before research has even been peer reviewed yet or sort of solidified in terms of, yes, this is definitely what happened here. Um, I think news outlets have definitely got a, and you know, media in general, uh, definitely have a, re a um, definitely have a history of being quite sensational in the way that they report findings from research studies. And I think it's because that, that's what garners interest, isn't it? I think the more sensational you can be about something, the more people are going to be wanting to read about it. Um, so things are probably, um, sort of illustrated or depicted as being a lot more exciting than they actually are. And you know, maybe this is what happened here. Um, things just got a bit sensationalized and were misrepresented. I was doing a little bit of casual Googling after this and um, I found a couple of articles. Um, so there's one from The Conversation. Uh, so that was back in January, 2023 and one from New Scientist. Uh, which was back quite a few years ago. So this was in February 2020. And um, so the one from the conversation talks about how there are various scientists who uh, uh, think that Neanderthals made art. Um, so it's not just star species that made art, like Neanderthals, you know, may well have done as well. There's apparently quite a bit of evidence to suggest that they did. The new scientist uh, paper also talks about how there's evidence that Neanderthals buried their dead. So that's not just our species, you know, poss possibly not just our species. Um, there's some evidence that Neanderthals did it as well. Let me know what you think. Uh, but you know what? It was a really interesting documentary. I did enjoy watching it at the time. Um, and yeah, I'll, I should really give it a rewatch as well. Um, but yeah, let me know what you thought of the documentary. And thank you very much for listening.